So good. Look at this crowd. <laughs> good job, gang. Good job. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Betty Wang, and for Erica Hill, who is out on the leave. And I'm Chris Raggy. Welcome back to the early show here this morning. What a wonderful... We've skipped spring. We have jumped ahead to summertime. It's going to be 90 here it. in the city. <laughs> for the warm weather and you know when it's warm outside a lot of people think about hey let me get a best friend shall i yeah to run park. in the park with exactly it's good they're all perfect we're just going to tell you how to go through those steps how easy it is to adopt a great dog exactly and speaking of perfect don't you want to look perfect <laughs> we have some models definitely a sight to be seen you are looking at live pictures right now our may our makeup mavens down there we've got carmody the down there ted gibson worked. working on hair working on our models and we will reveal the after the before wasn't bad the after is going to be out of this world we right have, right, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> but first let's take you over to cbs news correspondent elaine quijano with another check of the morning's headlines lane all right thanks guys and good morning everyone white house great day wherever you are and you know guys i was talking about the severe weather out there yeah. pushing through the ohio valley the tennessee valley could very well have something to say about the kentucky derby now the derby has never been canceled Never. But they've actually got a contingency plan in place uh -oh. today. In case uh -huh. that weather really kicks up, they could push the start time back a bit. But we are looking at maybe an inch of rain, possibly wow. up to three inches of rain. Tornadoes are a possibility in that area. That so is going to be a, be a mess. Rain out. Yeah. All right, love. Oh, they call them mutters, right? You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for giving away it's good where thing I'll they be have later those on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming up, we are going to talk about immigration reform. Just ahead, gear up for the best family cars of 2010. That's next. You are watching the early show on CBS. Good morning, everybody. If a new bill in the House of Representatives becomes law, your next car may have one of those black boxes inside it, just like the ones in planes, or a brake override system that will make it easier for you to stop your car. Good news for moms and dads, especially when children are involved. It never can be too safe. So choosing a family car isn't that easy, though, right? Well, Parents Magazine and the car experts at Edmunds.com have come up with a list of the safest cars on the road today. And here to tell us about a few of them is Dana points editor in chief of Parents Magazine. Thanks for being with us today. Could you choose the cars on this list? Well, we worked with Edmunds.com and we really looked primarily at safety and reliability. And then we factored in, obviously, affordability and family-friendly features. Two things that are very key. All right, uh, looking at this vehicle right here, tell us what it is and is, what is so great about this. Right, this is the Honda CRV, and one of the great car. Um, one of the things we loved for moms was this conversation mirror, hmm. which folds down. It allows you to see the children in the back seat. You know how some parents reset their rear view mirrors with the for kids. Me. Yeah. This car also had lots of great storage features, mm -hmm. like two glove boxes instead of the usual. I like that. Okay, now we're going over to a vehicle that is in the larger car category, yes, if you will. Yes, this is the Chevrolet Traverse, and one of the great things about this, again, the rear storage space is amazing. Mm -hmm. These fold down really easily. You don't break your back pulling it up, right? Love that. And this vehicle has enough space in it for eight passengers, so it's eight? three rows of seating. And the lot. second row of seats moves back and forth so uh -huh. that it's really easy to get people, even adults, into the third and row. if you don't need the last one, you have a little bit of leg room there, Exactly. Right? And because the, the first, that's <laughs> right. And the last one is the Ford Fusion. Now, this is a hybrid, correct? This is the hybrid. Yep. It was one of the um, only hybrids we looked at. And what's great about this is I think many people might associate a hybrid with sort of um, uh, a more casual kind of car. And this really has it's a good great... Looking. Um, inside, there's a couple of features. Features. For one thing, there is uh, a monitor that allows you to see how well you're doing, and that's because it is a hybrid, of course. Um, the other thing it has is a voice-activated. Barely hear it running, right? You, right. It's it's silent. It purrs like a kitten. Okay, you other two. Um, the first one was 28 miles to the gallon on the highway, and then 24 miles to the gallon on the highway. And all of these are family-friendly. All family-friendly. All very affordable. And and on our website, you can find parents.com. You can find the three really budget models that we chose. Well, as when well. you say affordable, what are we talking about? Um, the budget models that we chose were all around $19,000. Anything on our list really went over $30,000. Really? Yeah, we were, we were really focused on affordability. Very, very and good. And safety, of course. Safety, of course. Thank you so much, Dana Thanks. Points. And still ahead, country music star Mary Chapin Carpenter is back with a new CD live in our Second Cup Cafe. You're watching The Early Show on CBS. 
Dana, we're back with Dana. Elaine is joining us now. And of yeah. course, Lonnie's with us. Okay, you talked about these three cars, and I thought you did a superb job, but you forgot about this one. What, what's, the safety, what's the safety feature on this rig over here? Gas mileage on this, right? Talk about a sunroof. And, you know, and, and we're also talking about the safest cars, and yet we left the passenger door open in the middle of Fifth Avenue. It's okay. It's on Fifth Avenue. It's just a busy street. It's just a little four-story room, right? <laughs> these are three three top, top of the, uh, I mean, I guess, top of the line models yeah. that you have with us here. Um, from a safety standpoint, what are you noticing with people? What's the first thing that, that, that besides the cup holder, that, that parents are looking for with a, a you know, a good yeah, all-around car? Yeah, it's about more than the cup holder. I mean, one of the things that we looked at that many of the cars now have standard is vehicle stability control, yep. which really helps if the car is slipping to get things back in control quickly. Got it. Nothing and, like that and some uh, and a lot of storage breaks. room. I mean, that's key, right? Storage room is key. And being creative about the storage room, not just saying, like, the, the compartment is spacious, but to give you something like the storage shelf that folds down and is removable. Which really allows more items to be stored in the back. Mm -hmm. Anything that you see with cars, especially now in the year 2010, that you're like, oh, wow, that's so little, and it doesn't cost much to have it added on, but, right. wow, that really right. makes a difference. Right. They're really, um, they're much smarter. I mean, for example, this Ford Fusion that we looked at has a device that, that will show you how how well you're doing at driving the car and managing it in a way that's fuel efficient. Really? So it what gives it, you score kind of, you on it? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's yeah. like a visual device, a little gro a vine grows on the screen to show you if you're doing a good job being yeah. fuel efficient. I think people like those little that's rewards. Very green, if you will. Like a little driving yeah. tutorial. Yeah, right. We said goodbye to the station wagon. I'll yes, tell you, the we kids were all piled into the station wagon in the 1940s. I mean, yeah, that's well, that's well, I mean, that guy's wood panels. I know. You guys keep talking about the old days. We're going to go to the show. We'll be right back to watching the show here on TV. It was a heck of Up next, it is no laughing matter. The sex problem that affects one out of every... Low libido, no longer an issue just for older women. New research from the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health says many of today's young women feel guilty and stressed about their sex lives. Now, another study published in Obstetrics and Gynecology magazine found that, listen to this, one out of every 10 women between the ages of 18 and 44 experiences low libido. Joining us to discuss what can be done. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right, I hear the number one in 10 to well, address the issue. Let's get to that. What is causing this then? If you say it's between 10 and 30 percent. Well, there's so many different factors. There's the today a lot of people stressed out, the economy, their jobs, many of them overworked. How do you know that it's a problem with low libido? Are you are just tired and stressed and maybe a little depressed? Well, you want to gotcha. All right, Dr. Jen, thank you so much for your time today. We do appreciate it. And for more on how to revive a low libido, go to our partner in health, Web M Next. She has sold 13 million albums and won five grants. Great. Thank you so much. Mary Chapin, thank you. Yeah. Seriously, such a pleasure to have thank you back. Good to nice see you. Good to see, to see you. you. Thank you. Back on tour for the first time since 07. Yep. Are you looking forward to it, getting back out oh, there again? Absolutely. Celebratory. Yeah. Very, very happy. And the new album called Age of Miracles. Mm -hmm. uh, you went through a trying time physically with yep. an illness, but you're back yep. better than ever. You talk <laughs> about some heavy subjects, though, in this new album, um, Buddhist Monks in Burma, mm -hmm. Hurricane Katrina, racial tensions in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Why address those in this album? Well, that was part of it, um, certainly. Um, um, are you amazed that you're back where you are right now after experiencing something like that? It had to have been very scary. Just very grateful. I had amazing family and friends and wonderful doctors and uh, just very grateful to be back, as you can imagine. How much did that affect your songwriting when it came to this album? Well, um, it's kind of hard not to write about what you've been through, so I think it was pretty inevitable to uh, try to address it in some way. I know with all albums, when we talk to a lot of artists, they're like children. There's not one you like more than the other, but <laughs> yeah. this is number 12 for you right now. Oh. Where, where does this rank? <laughs> number 12. 12 uh, albums. 12 albums, five <laughs> Grammys, folks. Five Grammys. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Where does it rank? Does it? Uh, well, you always, I think, are, you know, uh, in love with the last thing you did, or hopefully. Yeah. If you don't feel that way about it when you finish, then maybe you didn't do the job you wanted to. So for now, I, I'm very proud of it. You have a favorite song on this album? No. N not yet? <laughs> no, not yet. I'm not going to pick amongst my children. <laughs> it's yeah. too early for that. Yeah. There's still time. Over 20 years in the industry, is there a moment that, that you look back on that you, that stands out more than any other? This others? morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this? <laughs> this morning. I, like I, say, I, heard, I thought I heard